I want to start off today to simply saying something, how thankful I am for the prophetic word of God and for the prophetic word that's in my life and that is displayed. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Someone that I respect uh, uh, sent me something prophetically this uh, last week. No, this week. This week. And I, I want you to hear it. I want you to see it. I want you to see what was said. And, and recently someone that I respect gave me this prophetic insight and, uh, and to see a couple of photos. And they're old pictures of this area right here in Towson, right here in Parkville. They're old pictures and uh, they're of this area and the roads, Cromwell Bridge Road that you came on, uh, they are dirt. In one of the pictures, they're, Lock Raven is a dirt road and out front here is a big dirt road. All right, now this picture is uh, very, very important for us to see. If you look up in the front right there, uh, th that's, that's a castle. And, and, and it's an amazing plex. That's the old car right in the middle. But notice what's sitting there, that big church. How do you see the church? Yeah. Now, so that you understand this right here, this is all underwater. Because this is the Lock Raven Dam. And 51 foot of water was poured into there and drowned that whole city. That is, that is a city called Warren, Maryland. It was a mill town. It was one of the most successful towns anywhere around Maryland. Baltimore City bought the rights to the city in um, about 1901 or 1902. And then there was a big fire in, ba in Maryland, in Baltimore. And after that fire, what they did was they needed a water supply better because they didn't have it. So they went into this place and they bought this town and they flooded it overnight. They turned everybody out. Now, the old church is still in the water. Now, how many of you know that that is a, an incredible picture? A lot of you probably, I don't think, I never knew it. I asked the old man I was with who lived here the other day if he knew about it. And uh, there's a great story about Warren, Maryland, and, and it's referred to in tragedy. It's referred to, it was, a, it was a town that was thriving. It was a town that was just prospering. It was a town that was just really on the cutting edge because of the waterways and so forth it had and the train that went through there. When I saw the picture, this person sent it to me and was prompting me prophetically to look at it and saying, Bishop, you need to look at this. And so I had never seen it and I did a search on my own and found a whole mess of this and all story about it and a woman that wrote poems about this thing and it began to intrigue me. And as soon as I laid eyes on the picture, uh, I had the person on the phone who sent it to me and I said, oh my God, I just heard Isaiah 59. Put Isaiah 59, verse 19, the second part, especially uh, Isaiah 59, verse 19 on the board. And it says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him and put him to flight for he will come like a rushing stream which the breath of the Lord drives. How many hear that? Soon as I see the picture, not knowing the history, I hear the Spirit of God say that the enemy came in like a flood, but the Lord put Rock City Church up on a mountain and raised the standard up above that valley. See, we're above the floodplain. Baltimore County has what they call a floodplain. Uh, those that are builders here know that. And, and we're above the floodplain because God wants us to remember that because of his covenant, he will never let us be washed away. And he will not let us be washed away by the trickery of man or the deception of Lucifer. Satan's plan is always 
to divert us, to take us off the plan of God. Can you hear that? That's his number one agenda is to get you off the plan that God has for you. And when we come to the Lord, no matter what age we, uh, we are, uh, we, we all come and we're always coming and we're all fragmented with pieces of our lives scattered here and there. I mean, you know, when you come to Jesus, you come fragmented. You come pieces all over the place. And, and I can show you so you can really get this. And uh, why? Why is it we come that way? Because scattering is a curse. When we come under uh, the result of sin in our life, scattering is a spirit and it's a curse. The enemy comes to scatter you. And it's only when you come to Jesus can he begin to make you whole again. Are you here today? And, and in that process, it's important. I looked at that city and saw, and if you read the stories, you will read stories about people who are fragmented. And because of the story, the oldest woman uh, <clears throat> from that city just died. She was 103 years old. And in that process, she tells a story of how it fragmented her because as a child, that city was so important to her. She knew where the church, she knew where the school was, she knew where the neighbors were, she knew all the pieces of that city that made up that community. Have you here? And then when the enemy came in, and when the flood came in, it fragmented that city and spread people everywhere. Hmm. Are you hearing me? How do you know war does that? How do you know when war comes in, it fragments a city? If you ever see pictures of World War II, you will not believe it's London. And if you've never been there, I've been there, you go there, there are places they still left like it was from the great aerial bombings of Russia, I mean Germany, that left England a devastation. Have you here? And you have fragmented places in that city still fragmented. France is still fragmented. Europe is fragmented. How many of you know the enemy is successful in breaking things apart so that the, the nation becomes fragmented? America is fragmented today. So Satan uses many tactics to get us sidetracked, diverted, three words. If you like to take notes, you want to get this. He uses uh, these tactics, and here's three of them. He sidetracks you, he diverts you, and he fragments you. Satan will make sure he sidetracks you, diverts you, and fragments you. Now, I've got to give you this, and then I'll be able to go forward. Go to 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Okay? You still with me? I mean, you know, the enemy is a master deceiver. And we need to, church world needs to know more about our enemy. We used to preach about the devil and hell and that kind of stuff. And then we got mature and we don't need to hear those messages. I don't think we got mature, saints. I think we got duped. I think we got tricked. Hello. We need to know our enemy. And we need to know his tactics. Can you hear that? So that we don't get caught off guard. I would you not be ignorant of his devices. Paul said. How do you know he's got devices that he uses. And one of them is to divert you from the path of God's purpose. Now the path of God's purpose is not going to be easy necessarily. But it's God's plan and God's purpose that's important. And it says uh, here in, in this wonderful portion of scripture uh, of 1 Peter 5, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, and be vigilant and cautious, cautious at all times. Now look, saints, if 
you're doing something, driving up a vehicle or something, and it tells you to be cautious at all times. Or when you're backing up, it says, you know, be cautious, look, or that kind of thing. Don't you think it means you ought to look, you ought to pay attention? I mean, you know, that means uh, you just got to be a little bit careful. We were laughing yesterday about ice fishing, trying to figure out who was the first fool that cut a hole in the ice and decided to stand on top of the hole and fish. Yeah. <laughs> I came up with the balance act of that, I think. I said, well, probably some Eskimo saw fish in the shallow part swim under the ice and figured, oh, they're still alive. Okay, let's get hard ice because they cut the ice sometimes it's that thick. And they sit out there in a hole. That's insane. And they sit out there in the winter. That's insane. And they sit out there when it's cold. And that's more insane to catch a fish that's colder than they are. And, and, and yet, you know, it's amazing that you have to be careful when you're out there cutting holes in the ice. Do you understand? There's a blooper on YouTube where guys are cutting a hole, right? And the guy, I kid you not, has a chainsaw. And he goes, and he goes, you see me, I got it. And all of a sudden, <laughs> he's gone. He cut the hole he was standing in. And he says, uh, be vigilant and cautious at all times. For the enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and to devour. Lights, camera, go. Now, if you have a squimish stomach, just close your eyes. Uh-oh. That's, that's the church running. That's that fool that thought he could do it on his own. Uh-huh. Look where he bit him. In the throat. Now, he don't want the... The mother, he wants the baby too. Watch this one. Oh, just born. show you something. I don't need to see the video again, but I'm going to show you something so that you'll really, really get this picture today. Because he always is selective. The lion is selective in who he eats. Notice he picked on the little one. Notice that big 500 pound plus lion took a little calf that was just born. Notice he separated the herd till one of them got out from amongst the others that he could get them individually and devour them. Come on. It's there, saints. We just need to see it. Now, notice Satan is seeking, he's the devil, is an adversary or a, the word there is important to see. He's a prosecutor. The devil's definition 
is used many times to say in so many different ways, but one of the definitions says he's an adversary, he is a prosecutor, he's a lawyer, a lawyer who, uh, one who persecutes us or prosecutes us, both. If you're having a struggle in an area, he comes to prosecute you in the weakest area of your life. If you're struggling with personality things or if you're struggling with uh, anger issues or if you're struggling with anything of that or drugs or anything, alcohol, if you're struggling with something, he will come and he will zero that in and he'll pursue that relentless. So that's why it's important that you don't hide sin because he sniffs it out. The devil. I think the Spanish call it Diablo. Yes. Right? But the Greek is Diabolus. The Greek word for devil is Diabolus. And, and it, it is one who continuously strikes until successfully penetrated. <laughs> think about this. <clears throat> he continuously strikes until he is successful at penetrating. That means this. If he can scatter you, he can penetrate into you because you have no defense. Lines look for these struggling loners. Those struggling, young, immature, are those wounded. How you know the lion is always looking? Look, you saw the picture. I only showed you a few. You saw the picture. Here's this this. Uh, water buffalo and they're all in a herd and the water buffalo the one that they got he got off he turned and went by himself you don't do that 